Hi, I'm over to all seeing Cam. We back to the channel with another one. Today we're here to react to the top 10 things that were true and were not true on the Jeffrey Dahmer's Netflix special Dahmer. This was brought to us by Mojo, the channel. Let's see what we what we saw from that show that was actually true facts and what wasn't. Top 10 things Netflix, the Jeffrey Dahmer series got factual, factually right and wrong. Let's jump into this and see what we believed and what we didn't. Putting down our picks for the top 10 things Dahmer monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, got factually right and wrong. <laughs> Dahmer was like, Ryan Murphy's Netflix. How Dahmer felt bad about everything he did in the show. We don't really know about real life, but he was just like, yo, I should go to jail for everything I did. Number 10, how Jeffrey Dahmer was caught. Right. All right. Right as in correct. Okay. So any, so how Jeffrey Dahmer was caught. Right. So that part in the, in the series is accurate. Netflix's limited series about Jeffrey Dahmer begins with the night a would-be victim survived an encounter with the killer. Come on, he escaped out. Got a call to come back. On July 22nd, 1991, Tracy Edwards spent hours in Dahmer. Am I the only one that's always tripping too on how he gave them always dirty ass cups from his sink? He'll go in his sink, run a little water, throw that out, and then throw the liquor in. They're like, I'm not drinking that shit. If it was spiked or not, I'm not drinking that. His apartment in fear, waiting for an opportunity to make his escape. And though the way in which he escaped is depicted differently in the series, Edwards did hit Dahmer and ran out of the apartment. Uh, I hit him I, and I ran towards the door and he's like right there. Tried to go grab me get me back in there two police officers went to Dahmer's residence to obtain the key to unlock the this handcuffs is the still on one of Edward's wrists. Once they found explicit photos documenting some of the murders, Dahmer was apprehended, putting an end to his reign of terror. Which is crazy because if he didn't have those pictures out or they didn't find those pictures, Dahmer probably would have still continued doing what he was doing. Uh, another like LGBTQ relationship unlocked the cuffs and sent him on his way and sent Dahmer back on his. The and it happened multiple by... times. An individual who claimed he was in the apartment, the apartment, and uh, left the apartment and called the officers. Number nine, Dahmer wore yellow contacts. I did not know this. Prior to watching this, I had no clue about Dahmer and the yellow contacts. So that was a fun fact that I was surprised to see. Right. One of the lesser known facts and the exes, about Dahmer you guys was his a huge fan of? habit of wearing yellow contact lenses. You see my contacts? See my contacts? Just like the emperors. Star Wars is what he was referring to there, the emperor. He wore them because Him. he felt connected to two dark characters in his favorite movies. The Emperor from Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, and the Gemini Killer from the... I remember that. When the priest gets the spirit in him, he gets the same contact. No bull. When I saw the series and I said, oh my god, I said what it reminds me of when, this, when the demon jumps into the priest. Exactly what it reminded me of. Exorcist 3. In changing his appearance to resemble these powerful fictional figures, Dahmer himself felt more powerful and predatory. That I, I actually derives a sort of pleasure from watching that tape. Did you like feeling evil? No, no, I didn't. But uh, I tried to overcome the thoughts and it worked for a while but eventually i gave in he repeatedly watched the films before he went out to find another victim to bring home often making them watch the films with him what are you gonna do yeah. so that was correct as well hold on i went by a little bit too fast that's it right? i didn't even we're gonna hang out and watch a movie and take some pictures Tracy Edwards also testified that while playing The Exorcist 3, Dahmer was chanting and rocking back and forth. That's scary. It's like a slow... Bro, I've watched The Exorcist a hundred times. I can't imagine watching The Exorcist with somebody in there like... Speaking in tongues and Latin and rocking back and forth. Bro, I would have jumped out the window. I would have took the AC and everything with it. Slur like... Mm. Some of that nature, some close like that, I'm not sure. That's Did terrifying. it keep on for a period of time? Off and on throughout the ordeal. Number eight, how Ronald Flowers wrong. survived. So how Ronald Flowers survived, wrong. Ronald Flowers was the man that, remember his grandmother said, I'm going to stay awake until he wakes up. Wrong. I gave him mad credit for that too, that's crazy. That I didn't know that. Jesus. Don't worry, I'm not a cop. Another survivor of Dahmer was Ron up Flowers, who met him when his car broke down and Dahmer offered to help. He took him to his grandmother's West Alice residence and drugged his coffee. But Dahmer is interrupted when his grandmother sees that something is wrong with the young man. You should take that young man to a hospital. What? 
He's just a little wasted, Grandma. I will not have some stranger dying in my house. He'll be fine. Just let him sleep it off. Jeez. Oh. No, something is not right here. She is adamant about staying with the unconscious guest, making sure he gets on a bus the next morning. But her actual involvement in saving Flowers from her grandson has never been reported. Like in the series, Flowers woke up in County General Hospital. Grandma, you OD'd. You're lucky to be alive. But oh, so he what is isn't alive. mentioned is that he was also covered in abrasions and believed he might have been assaulted. He later testified that he didn't know how he got there, though the series provides a fictional scenario. So the ending at the he hospital was real, just was how he got Number there. Number seven, Dahmer posed in yearbook photos. Right. All right, in my head, I thought that was gonna be fake. I remember that scene and in my head, I was like, yo, that's probably gonna be top 10. I thought that was gonna be fake, but that was How did he get in there? I don't know. That's yeah, crazy. Bombing on a bomb in the yearbook the photo. That's crazy. The series mainly follows Jeffrey Dahmer as an adult, but a flashback to him in high school shows him sneaking into a yearbook picture for the Honor Society, despite not being a member. Yes, he actually they did really this, and his up. face was subsequently blacked out of the photo. My friend Dahmer, both the graphic novel and its film adaptation, go further into the prank and the other club photos he infiltrated. Excuse me, what are you? Oh, no. I'm going to try to actually watch that. It's not really necessary. Former classmates have described how his bizarre behavior in school quickly went from entertaining to concerning, given his heavy drinking. And I remember sitting next to him in a, a first period, I believe, history class, and he had a styrofoam cup of scotch, I believe it was scotch. Styrofoam cup, double poured up. I remember saying, Jeff, what is that? And he threw his head back and he shook it and he said, it's my medicine. Number six. Dom Anybody remember those cool kids that used to come to school with a water bottle and look you be like, that's not water in my bottle. <laughs> Vodka. Or killed Dean Vaughn. Wrong. Wrong. In episode seven, wow, Linda know. Cleveland meets Dean Vaughn, a new resident of the Oxford Apartments. Sorry I snapped on you. You just gotta be careful in this neighborhood. I'm a good guy, Scout's Honor. She sees him talking to Dahmer in the hall and is visibly concerned. The series doesn't follow through with his story, but it does point viewers in a certain direction. That Dahmer killed him. However, Vaughn was really a tenant in the building. He was found strangled in his upstairs apartment in early May 1991. Dahmer was questioned about the suspicious death before he was arrested, and again when he was eventually caught. Both times he denied knowing him, and no wow. evidence was ever found connecting him to the crime. As of 2022... What's the odds that you get smoked in an apartment where a serial killer lives and he ain't even do it? That's bad luck. The murder of Dean Vaughn is still unsolved. But what about Dean Vaughn? You was talking to him in a hallway then i never saw him after that number five baptized the same day as john wayne gacy's execution this was the craziest thing of all i did not know that prior to this either john wayne gacy as we know as the clown killer jeffrey Dahmer was baptized the same day that john wayne gacy was executed that is insane what's the odds? beginning of the final episode doesn't open on jeffrey Dahmer, but rather another infamous serial killer john wayne gacy are you guys think you're gonna give us a netflix killer clown a netflix in the 1970s gacy took the lives of more than 33 oh, young men in Illinois until he was arrested in December 1978. Gacy was the epitome of evil. And he was the epitome of being a great guy, which gave him the ability to be the most evil guy. I was going to say, yeah, because everybody looked at him like he was helping this. The convicted the murderer was on death row at Illinois' Menard Correctional Center. And on May 10th, 1994, Gacy was executed by lethal injection. John Wayne Gacy was pronounced dead at 12.58 uh, a.m. Uh, he got a much easier death than any of his victims. In my opinion, he got an easier death than he deserved. Wow. But the important thing is that he paid for his crimes with his life. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, Dahmer was being baptized by Minister Roy Ratcliffe. And as it's briefly mentioned in the series, a partial solar eclipse also occurred that day. Like what's the odds all three happened? We don't know, but this connection between two notorious killers is definitely eerie. In a solar eclipse. Congratulations, Jeff. That's just the weirdest day in history. Number four, victim impact statements. Yes, right. I'm actually right. I watched the ones that they did on the show, and I rewatched the real ones, and they were perfect. They were perfect. They were even wearing the same apparel. I would like to say to Jeffrey Dahmer that he don't know the pain. This poem that she read was real too. I saw when the, the real person ran, read the poem. In the mental state he's put our family in. 
One of the most heartbreaking parts of Jeffrey Dahmer's 1992 trial was hearing the impact statements. After sitting through the details of his crimes, family members of the victims had the opportunity to address the court. One of the more harrowing statements came from Rita Isbell, the sister of Earl Lindsay. The series recreates the emotionally charged moment with actress Deshaun Barnes, who embodied the palpable pain, anger, and sadness of Isbell in her performance. Now, I don't want to ever have to see my mother go through this again. Never, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I hate you. And Dahmer's own statement took a lot from the real life one. Man, I did what I did, not for reasons of hate. I hated no one. Number three, Glenda Cleveland lived at the Oxford Apartments. I saw this in another YouTube series that she actually lived next door. Wrong. In the series, actress Niecy Nash plays the role of Glenda Cleveland, a woman who is often overlooked in the Niecy Jeffrey Dahmer case. Her name in my she later, interacts so with him, mostly to complain about the smell and noise coming from his apartment through her vent. I gotta say, that smell is worse than ever. Is it? The it? real Cleveland actually lived in the building next to the Oxford Shout Apartments. You, the character is likely a composite of Cleveland and Pamela Bass, the woman who lived... Pamela Bass ate the sandwiches. Pamela Bass ate the sandwich. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. Oh, I want to throw up. I don't even like bologna. I can't imagine eating a human ass cheek. Across the hall from Dahmer, who possibly unknowingly consumed human meat given to her by her neighbor. My neighbor used to feed me in my whole crib, but I never ate it. continuously call Milwaukee police after her daughter, Sandra door. Smith, and niece, hate. Nicole Childress, told her about a boy they tried to help. Number two, Milwaukee police officers returned a victim back to Dahmer's yes, apartment. that I knew prior right. to this as well. <laughs> what Hey kid, what are you doing? In late May 1991, some young women, including Smith and Childress, found Connor sent the psalm phone stumbling in the streets, not in the Oxford Apartments hallway as shown in the series. He already had they called head, the so police to help the very that, young looking boy. He was holding on to me with a really, really strong grip, and he was trembling, he was shaking. That's sad, bro. I messed your life up, bro. You so I just stayed with him and I was like, I'm gonna get you some help. But when Dahmer came back to his apartment, he convinced officers Joseph Gabrush and John Balserzak that Cynthia Samphone was of age and his boyfriend. In the series, Cleveland is at the scene confronting police, trying to tell them that he was a minor. Wait, wait, wait. You, 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 you're just gonna let him take this baby back inside? Man, I wish I was He's telling me this How nice it must be to be white. Y'all don't at least wanna find out how old this boy is first? This should have happened. This boyfriend. Boyfriend. He's got a guy. He got a guy leaking. I'm really sorry about this, everybody. He's halfway dead. He's like tests from the women. Dragging him back the into the apartment. Cops is there posing. And his incoherent boyfriend back to his apartment. Bruh. When the police left. I've been stopped. I look suspicious. Tragically, I look this suspicious. What does that mean? Actually what does that mean? I look after suspicious. After Dahmer's arrest. Gabrish and Balserzak were suspended, but later reinstated. Reinstated, like it was. Dahmer always wore his glasses at trial wrong. Trial wrong. Mr. Dahmer, before I impose sentence, I understand you have a statement you'd like to read? Yes, Your Honor. Towards the end of the series, Jeffrey Dahmer goes on trial for the murders. While the majority of the scenes are accurately recreated, there's one detail that was different. Mm. Evan Peters as Dahmer almost always wears the killer's trademark glasses, but the real Dahmer specifically did not wear his glasses throughout most of the trial. His reason? He didn't want to look the jury or victim's families in the face. Yes, it's a small Coward. inaccuracy in a largely true-to-life series. However, his decision to remove his eyewear is significant because it shows that he was unable to face his crimes. I don't understand why they kept the glasses I didn't feel accountable to anybody. I didn't feel that I had to, a big to uh, face what I had done ever. And uh, so you, you have. there comes a point where a person has to has to be accountable for what he's done. Guys, comment down below. Let me know. Did you know any of these fun facts before watching it? Are you shocked on anything that you've seen during the series is actually not factual? Or maybe it was and you're just shocked that it actually was real? Comment down below. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to comment. Make sure to click the heart for super thanks if you like what you saw and you want me to continue creating dope content for us. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're doing a giveaway at 4,000 subs. We will be sending out higher movie merch to a selected few from our subscribers. All you have to do to join is like this video comment down below and follow my social media which is on the description to this video and like i love to say until the next one we out of here